Hi, and welcome to my channel, Mayfield Restorations. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this old set of oak drawers. It's actually a tiger oak. Um, I'll be showing you how to remove the existing finish, carry out a number of repairs on these, restore the original hardware, and deal with some unforeseen issues along the way. Um, this wasn't actually going to be a restoration. I was going to do some sort of restyle on this, but once I started working on the drawers, I realized how beautiful the grain was. So I decided to go down the restoration route. So hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching. Hi, I'm David and I restore, restyle and refinish old and loved furniture. I use a variety of methods and techniques to bring this forgotten furniture back to life. Welcome to my channel. A lot of these old vintage drawers have a rear upstand on them. I don't like them, so I tend to take them off my pieces, which is what I'm doing now. To start the cleaning process properly here, I'm using a degreaser spray. This one is called Elbow Grease and it's available here in the UK, but you can use most degreaser sprays. Um, they don't have to be super expensive. I'm just showing you the tool setup I have to remove the hardware, particularly on these drawers. These have got the internal um, bolt caps on them. So just start them off with a very thin screwdriver, go on to a bit of a wider flathead screwdriver and prise them off. Um, sometimes you can do it with your fingers, but in this case, I just had a little set of uh, blunt nose pliers and you can just pull it off just as easy as that. These draw pulls were held on with a little square nut at the back of the bolt, so a pair of adjustable spanners, or you can use pliers again, and just loosen them and unscrew them out with your fingers, making sure to put the bolt back in the pull that you've taken off. I always label a container and put the draw pulls from that specific draw into that container. Just saves any confusion later. I'm not confused and I haven't actually lost anything here. What I'm doing is I'm determining whether the top is solid wood, which I initially thought it was. Now the the, the grain pattern underneath, this is inside the cabinet, um, is quite prominent and on the top you can see that same grain pattern. So this determined that it was actually solid wood. The reason I've done this small clip in real time is because I tend to speed through the sanding process so you don't have to watch it all. Um, but it tends to give a false sense of how quick you can remove finish with the sander off the top of these pieces and all over these pieces actually. Um, it's the same with a lot of furniture upcyclers and restorers and flippers. Um, it looks very quick the sanding process but believe me um, it really isn't. So that's all. That's the only reason I wanted to show you it in real time. Mm -hmm. 
We have a dr the dreaded wood-eating insect, um, which is what's caused this hole. You can see the wood flaking away where it's been eating it. This is what I found in the hole. It dried up and dead. It's been dead a long time. Um, but yeah, it's it's actually got into the wood and it's eaten away behind the face of the wood. This is solid oak, so it's had a really nice feast. So all I need to do, rake out all the existing loose material. And then I use a, an insecticide treatment to ensure that there's no further insect. And it also hardens the wood. Um, and then we can deal with that moving forward so wasn't expecting it but no big deal please don't be worried that i'm filling this hole with wood filler uh, it won't stay like that it's, it's just to give it a base for the the repair that i'm going to do shortly in the video top had actually split um, I think it's where the the initial oak planks were laminated together it had come away and slightly warped um, you can see I'm adding quite a lot of glue here still I've not had my delivery of my wood syringes yet so I clamp the piece wipe off any excess glue and just leave that to dry same here with some of the joints uh, the they've actually pulled away you can see the uh, dowels in there so all I'm doing here is adding a bit of glue and I again will clamp these together and wait for it to dry. This is just dealing with the holes that were left after I removed the, the upstand at the back of this piece. I have a couple of different sized dowels. Those didn't fit and this one fit a treat. So try it for size, put a bit of wood glue on it and knock it into the hole. I managed to find a piece of old trim from a previous piece of furniture. Luckily it was in oak. So I did a bit of measuring, did a bit of cutting on my bandsaw and you'll see what I did with it in just a second. Come on. Come on then. Does he come? <laughs> he 
if you like what you've seen so far, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the like button. I'd really appreciate it. It's a new channel and all your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you. thought I'd give my card scraper another go on this. I've just recently sharpened it a little bit and as you can see it's doing a great job. So cut through this original finish really quickly and then I just finished it off with the sander. The original hardware was rusted and tarnished so I give it a go with the barkeeper's friend and some 4-0 wire wool but it didn't really give me the effect I wanted. So on to the next step, again I, I, you see it there but apologies for the poor focus I didn't realise it hadn't focused until I downloaded the footage. This is just a wire brush attached to my bench drill, uh, slowly spinning and you just brush off the rust with that. and. I'd say you can't really see it very well, but it did come up a treat. Once all the rust was cleared away, I just sealed these up with a bit of clear satin lacquer. I have an air compressor, so I use this to get rid of the bulk of the dust. Once I done this I then moved on to the microfiber cloth and some white spirit. Just wipe this all over the piece and it will take away the remaining dust and it will also uh, ensure that the grain isn't lifted as it would if you use water. I've had a few comments asking me to uh, explain more about the products that I use. So this is Morel's Light Fast Stain. Uh, this one is actually in white, which I've never used before. It's an alcohol-based stain, so it does dry very quickly and it absorbs very quickly. All I'm doing here is using a clean rag and folding it into a manageable piece. Um, I dip the rag and shake off the excess and away we go with the stain. So yeah, so this is Morel's Light Fast Alcohol Based Stain. As you've seen in other videos, I like to uh, make the most of some of the fine details in these pieces. So here I am just staining the dovetail joint. So a little artist brush, dab off the excess stain uh, and a steady hand and that's it really. This is what tends to happen when you're rushing um, and you can't be bothered putting the container with the stain on the worktop. You're just holding it in your other hand, so I wouldn't advise this. As I mentioned previously, this is a alcohol-based stain and you do have to work fairly quickly with it. So it's just a case of getting it on with a rag 
and then leaving it just probably for about 30 seconds or so and then wiping it off with a shop towel. You can build this stain up, you just need to leave it a little bit longer to dry before you put your second coat on. As you can probably see from this video, I tend to do a couple of coats just to try and get an even coverage. Uh, a bit more product information. Uh, for my top coats, if I'm using a poly uh, top coat, I use polyvine decorators varnish and it comes in different finishes, satin, gloss and matte. This one is satin um, and I spray this on. I I've also sponge it on and, and brush it on, but in this case I'm spraying it on. So you'll see I was just rolling the bottle there. Don't shake it because you'll put air bubbles into the poly. Uh, in this case I'm just watering it down ever so slightly just for the gun. You don't need to do this, but it just goes a little bit further and it's a, it's a nicer finish. So put it in your gun and get ready for spraying. Um, you want the gun on a very low setting for air and a very low setting for the materials coming through. And then it's just a case of, for me anyway, multiple uh, light coats uh, building up that uh, nice smooth finish. We're on the final leg now and it's time to feed the drawers um, to, because they will be dried out. So again I'm using the Howard's Feed and Wax and a little wax brush. It's just a case of giving it a good shake, putting a liberal amount onto the brush or you can put it directly onto the drawer and then brushing it in. Just leave that for about 15-20 minutes, wipe off the excess and after a couple of hours just give it a buff with a dry cloth. This is where I got my stain soaked fingers on the drawer and didn't didn't notice it so I put some wax on this so in, instead of getting sand and dust all over the nice wax just put a paper towel there, um, sand off the the fingerprint and then apply more wax. The draw pulls came out okay, um, but the the nice engraved details on them was a bit flat. So I used a bit of Liberon Silver Gilding Cream um, just to highlight those lovely details on the pulls. So use your index finger and just apply some of the cream to your index finger, take off the excess and then just very lightly rub it against the raised portion of the pulls. Again, apologies for the focus on this. I don't know what my camera was doing uh, today. But yeah, that's how they turned out. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd just like to thank you for watching once again. And now it's time for the final reveal.
I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and the work that I've produced. I definitely plan on adding more videos, so if you like what I do, please show your support by hitting subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and click the notification bell. Thanks for watching.